Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? I am sorry about that. I don't know what that was. Um, but here we are. We are back. Uh, thank you. I'll give you a few seconds um, to kind of come in. Um, I don't know what happened with the screen, but here we are. And God is good. Thank you. I thank God for getting a little bit of rain this evening, this afternoon. So I thank God for it. It's been hot in the last few days. So, um, Lord knows my little my shoes and um, that's we use a little rain, but um, we're back. We're back. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to get in. <clears throat> Welcome to you all. Thank you all for taking the time and coming in and supping with us again this afternoon. Um, God is good. Amen. Amen. Sister Janet, how are we doing today? Amen. It's good to see you all. I'm going to set this up and then we're going <clears> to <throat> we'll jump right into it. Amen. All right. How's everybody doing today? Uh, we thank God for you all coming again, uh, joining us. Uh, we're going to pray real quick and then we're going to jump right into this word because I don't I want to hold you too long tonight. Uh, we want to get right into the scripture. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We thank you for the hearers and the doers of your word. We thank you for the, the ones who would hear your word today and allow it to mature them, to edify them, to lift them up. Lord, we magnify you above all our situations, all our problems. We give you glory. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray all of these blessings upon ourselves and upon others. Amen. 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 Well, let's jump right into it. We're going to start in Psalms 119. It's going to be where we'll be heading to. Uh, first verse for tonight will be Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And we're going to read verse 105. Amen. Psalms 119, and we're going to read verse 105. <clears throat> All right. And it reads, though thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is his word that's going to, that's going to be a guiding light on how I'm to walk. How I am to respond to life, how I am to uh, act and deal. I deal according to what his word says, regardless of what I'm facing, regardless of who comes against me, what comes against me, how many times it comes against me. I'm to respond only one way, and that's according to what his word says, and always to respond out of love. All right. So look what it's saying. He's saying this, your, 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 his word is going <clears> to <throat> be a lamp unto thy feet. It's going to guide the way that you walk, that you're supposed to walk. You're supposed to walk in, in, in your righteousness. It's going to help you understand that. You're supposed to walk redeemed. It's going to help you understand that. You're supposed to walk uh, saved or sozo. His word is going to help you understand that. You're supposed to walk in healing. You're supposed to walk in prosperity. You're supposed to walk delivered. Come on. These are the things that his word is going to help you understand and also teach you how to walk in those things. Watch this. A light upon my path. So according to how you're walking with his word, it's also going to light and guide you in your path. It's going to be a guide. What, what else does the word do? The word is going to illuminate some things. It's going to light up some things. Not only is it going to light up a way for you and, and, and guiding you in this walk in life. That's all it is. It's just a walk in life. But it's also going to light, light up some things that's in your life. Uh, things that may be uh, in dark places, there things that may be hidden, right? It's going to expose them. That's one thing about the Word of God that it will expose you. Um, like I said before, a lot of times, a lot of times, this is why people uh, shy away from reading His Word because His Word does bring about exposure to you. So it will expose you. It will show you uh, the ugly parts of you. But it's a good thing if you if it shows it to you. It's a good thing because that means it's time to deal. It's showing you some places that. That you can now let go. It's gonna it's gonna teach you how to be free from those things. That's why it's exposing it. 
and it's going to help you be free from them. You're not going to do it in your own power. Uh, you're going to do it with the help of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost in light of his word and of his word is going to help you to see those things and it's going to help you to uh, very well see that you've already overcome them and walk in a power that overcomes all of those weaknesses and all of those things that would uh, so much try to uh, uh, hold you down or keep you bound, right? For example, attitudes and tempers, it's going to you know, those things try to keep you down. Let's try, let's try to hold you. But the, the word is going to teach you what to do with anger. The, the word is going to teach you what to do with attitude. The word is going to teach you about your mouth, right? It's going to teach you about all of these things. And then the Holy Ghost is going to, with the help of the Holy Ghost, along with the word, it's going to have you to give you the ability to walk in the very thing that you're reading. So it's going to light up your path. Now watch this. As the word lights up your, is the lamp unto your feet so you can see which way you're going, it's also going to light up your path. It's also going to give you an ability and a power that you're going to walk in now. So the word gives you the ability and the power to walk through things that normally would take other people out. But because of the word of God, because you've allowed yourself to be established and get, <clears throat> excuse me, rooted in his word, his word is going to give you a supernatural ability to be able to walk through things that normally would take the natural person or a natural person out, right? It would, they would normally fall apart. They normally would not be able to withstand the pressure. But because you've allowed, you've established yourself in his word, you've allowed the Holy Ghost to come in and teach you some things according to his word. Now you have a supernatural ability. So what, to, what the word does is to put the super on your natural, because naturally we are just natural, but with the word of God and the Holy Ghost, that natural becomes super. And now you have the opportunity and the ability to have supernatural operating in your life because you've allowed yourself to become and allow the word to become flesh now in your life. So that, that you normally couldn't do in your own power, <clears throat> you normally couldn't withstand in your own power. Now you can because you've allowed yourself to abide and get established in his word and allow his word to illuminate, to bring clarity to some things in your life. And as it continues to do that, it's going to uh, gonna uh, better build your character. It's going to better uh, clean you up. These are all the things that the word of the word. And the word does this all by itself without your help. It, it doesn't need your help. All it needs you to do is to believe in it and then take the time to apply it. When situations happen, you can be talking and dealing. You can be just talking just in general, right? And get to talking about the word and then your, the scriptures will come up in your conversation. You weren't even thinking about it. But scriptures will come up. Revelation will come up in your in your conversation. I we I just experienced this today with sharing with a with a member of mine. And we were just, just talking in general, talking about certain things, and then the then the Lord revealed some things and it and it, it helped me and it also helped her. And we, it, it, we both were saying that we 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 this was on point, right? This is this is some solid revelation that we were receiving because of the way that we were looking at some things. But look, it all came by way of the Holy Ghost. It all came by way of his word. So look, here you and here you and that person, y'all were sharing, just communing and generally talking with each other. Uh, 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 and look what happened. The word came about and, it, and it, 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 it lit up our area where we were walking. Talking is walking. <laughs> you're communing with somebody, you're walking with them, right? Okay, so watch this. It lit up our path and now we got a, a better understanding. We had some revelation to break there. Why? Because of his word. The scripture came up and behind that scripture, others followed it. Then boom, revelation broke right there. And we both were gone. You, you follow what So see how the word comes up? Just in, in just in general conversation, the word will come up and bring about um, an enlightenment. So it's very key and important to, to establish yourself in his word. And, and, and as you get into his word, everything you're not going to get right away. I'm, 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 trust me. But you just keep at it year by year, year by year. And, and watch this. We don't get in his word uh, uh, to, to for head knowledge, we, we get in his word to know him. It's knowing him is so important, and the way that you know him is by the word. All right, so that's Psalms 119 and 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's his word that's going to do that. So it's so key uh, to get established in his word. All right, let's go to Mark 10 and 30. Mark 10 and 30. Mark 10 and 30. So key to get established in his word. All right, Mark 10 and 30. 30th verse reads. I hear he's talking about uh, letting go. Uh, in other words, dying to yourself, the verse before. Right? But in this, th in this, this 30th verse, look, look what happens. He said, but he or she shall receive, watch this, 
when you let go, when you die, when you when you when you let other things uh, take a back seat to what and, and and let the Father take priority in your life. That's really what it's talking about. You really you 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 become fully persuaded on some things. You become fully persuaded on His love, right? You become fully persuaded on how how to deal, how to walk, how to respond to life. It says, watch. So in the, in doing that, there is there are some sacrifices. There's some things that you will have to let go, but it's it's a lot of the stuff that the father asks you to let go. He didn't even really make you for that anyway. When you really think about it, when he's when he's asking you to let some things go, when he talks to you about dying, what he's trying to get you to die from is stuff he didn't even make you for. That stuff you were taught before you got with the father. <clears throat> so he's trying to get you to let go some things that you that you that you weren't even made for to be carrying anyway. Watch this. So when you do that, as you make these sacrifices, as you die to yourself more, watch what he says. But he or she shall receive. A hundredfold. Now look when you're going to receive this hundredfold. Now in this time. This isn't in the sweet Bible. This is in the pie in the sky. He said you're going to receive a hundredfold. The more you die, the more you sacrifice, the more you let go of, of how you see it, your perspective, uh, uh, how you feel about it. And you, you, you begin to respond to life according to how I see it. You begin to respond to life according to how I view it. You begin to deal and respond to life according to how I deal. He said, watch this. You're going to receive a hundredfold in this earth. Now watch this. Look what you're going to receive. Houses. Tell me more. Brethren. How are you going to receive brethren? Because as you, as you, as you, as you go deeper with him, you're going to meet other like-minded people. They're going to become your brothers in the Lord. Watch this. They're going to become your sisters in the Lord. Look at the next one. And mothers. How am I going to receive mothers? I only have one mother. No. You can have mothers in the Lord. You can have uh, spiritual mothers that's in the Lord that can that can help you that can that can give advice and give guidance. Watch this. And children, you will have others. You will have you will have some grown folks that'll be like a, that be like children to you, right? They'll be like a, they'll be like child. And then you'll also receive uh, and be able to help in in the raising of, of a family because it's a village that raised children anyway. So what better who better to lean on than your church family when it comes to your kids and understanding some things helping you through things and dealing with things when it comes to your kids. Who better to lean on than your church family, right? Watch this. Look at the next one. And lands. Look, good Lord. Not only are you going to receive houses, but you're going to receive lands too. Now, let me tell you something. That's wealth. Hmm. Hallelujah. Lands is wealth. Anytime you receive land, anytime you inherit land, anytime you get any piece of property, that is wealth. Hallelujah. All right? For those who, who do own homes, you know, you, you know, you might have a nice home, but the, the real value of that is in, is in the land. It's the land. That's really that's the value. It's not so much the house. Watch this. So look at this. The lands with, look what comes with it now. You got to be prepared for this. With persecution and in the world to come, eternal life. So now watch this. It says, all these things you'll get back now as you deny yourself, as you continue to walk with me. He said, but you got to be prepared for the persecution that's going to come behind it. So this is a, this is a lot of times you wonder, can, can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to actually to walk in this life, to, to walk with Jesus Christ and be blessed? Because with the blessing comes persecution, with the promotion, with any time the Father exalts you, any time the Father takes you higher, with that is going to come persecution. And persecution only comes by people, all right? You, you, not, you can't be persecuted by situations. Persecution can only come by, by a person or by people. So can you, can you stand to, to be blessed? Can you stand to receive a hundredfold in this earth, in the now, in this time? Because when it comes persecution, and when persecutions come, you cannot be taken it personally. You cannot be offended. Come on now. You can't be sensitive when persecution comes because it's going to come. He's already promised you. He's saying, look, you're going to be blessed. Look, you're going to get, you're going to get things back. You're going to get brothers. You're going to get sisters. You're going to get mothers, right? You're going to get children. You're going to get lands. You're going to get houses. But along with that, it's going to come persecution. Are you are you are you are you going to be okay with that? You better know that as as the God as the Father continues to take you higher, there's going to be persecution behind it, and you and you got to be prepared for that when when things happen. But you but if you can if you understand love and you continue to walk in love when persecution comes, you'll be able to respond the right way because you'll understand that what it's all a plot in you. It's all a plot to get you sidetracked, and you're not going to allow anybody sidetrack you out of the love of the Father, right? So this is a good one to remember. So it, it helps you to, to deny yourself even more, right? Because it's so key in denying yourself, dying to yourself, right? And in, in that, in that letting go, 
right? I didn't say cut nobody off now, right? And he's saying, look, left houses. And one, one verse says, love less, right? Love less your mother, love less your father. And we're not cutting people off. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you, you love people from a distance. I'm not saying that. You deal accordingly now, you know? If you got a situation that they're doing certain things, you don't have no power in that area, then you might have to pull yourself away so you can get some power before you can go back over there and deal. Now, that's just using wisdom, right? But but I'm not saying you cut people off. You, know, you just let people to the wayside because I haven't seen the father do that yet. And I can't I can't see a father doing that uh, to us, a, a loving father that would just leave you to the wayside because you're just not going to change. That's not, that's not how he operates. That's not how he deals. And so likewise, we should not be the same. Like we shouldn't deal that same that way. Look what he said, but we're gonna get it back in this earth right now. So that's 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 encouraging, saints. No matter what I let go, as, as long as I release it and I release it with a sincere heart and not grudgingly, cheerfully let things go, I die to myself even the more. He's already promised. He said, I'll give it back to you. I'll give it back to you in this earth, now in this time. All right, and the world comes eternal life. So don't be don't be afraid to die to yourself. All right, don't be afraid to let things go. All right, that's Mark 10 and verse 30. All right, turn with me to Luke. Luke 12 and 34. Luke 12 and 34. He's going to give it back to you. He's going to give it back to you. He's going to give it back to you. Luke 12, verse 34. Watch this. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And my question is, where is your treasure? Oh, God. Thanks. Where is your treasure? Something like covenant. Where is your treasure? Because wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. It is 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 Jesus our treasure? Is 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 he really our treasure? Or is our job our treasure? Right? Is our financial status our treasure? Is what we own or what we have is that our treasure? Are our kids our treasure? Is my spouse my treasure? Right? Uh, the position that I hold, my income status, uh, things that I you know are these? Do I have my do I have my treasure? Do I have my heart set on the wrong thing? My heart should be set on him and him alone, right? And I, and, and I don't go after or seek after anything else. I, I know that all of those other things are resources from the source. So my child is a resource from the source. My wife is a resource from the source. My job uh, is a resource from the source, the things that I have, the things that I own are just resources from the source. He is the source of my everything. And if everything was just a damage, if, everything, if I was to lose it all today, I still would be okay because what? I'm still connected to the source. And he's my source. My wife isn't my source. My child. And I love them both. But, but they're not my source. He's my source. He's my everything. My heart is in his hand. So I lean to him. And even... If I step out of, of, of myself, of our, if I move a certain way, I allow him to come in and father me. I allow him to come in and correct. I allow him to show me myself to make some adjustments. And it comes by way of him. And then I make the necessary adjustments. If I, if I, if I, if I go too far, right? And then he says, hey, son, you know, you, you went too far with that. You need to go back and you need to, you need to deal. You need to get that. You need to get that straight. You need to address that. Right? We're not going to let that linger. We need to address it. So then what I need to do is go and address it. Why, why can't, how can he do me like that? Because my heart is in his hand. He can, he can twist it. He can touch it. That's why it's always good <clears throat> to have somebody in your life or have somebody dear to you who can hear from the Lord, who the Lord can talk to. Let me tell you something. It's an honor to be married to a person who can hear from the Lord. My, my wife hears from the Lord. I thank God for it. He, he shows her things. He he visits her in the night hour. He, he gives her dreams. Lord, have mercy. Her dreams be so sharp. It's scary, right? How sharp her dreams are, how important her dreams are, right? But he has he has his way of communicating with her and dealing with her and talking to her about herself. And she can see herself. And he'll come and deal with her about, about stuff that, 
that she needs to address, right? And, and she listens. Same thing with me. He'll come and deal with me. But the only way he can do that is if my heart is with him. Come on, saints. He said, look, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So where is your treasure? It, he needs to be our treasure. He needs to be, like we talked about a few Wednesdays ago, he needs to be our reward. It's him and him alone. And if nothing else is, is going on right around me, one thing I do know, I'm, I have him. <laughs> no matter what it looks like, I know who my father is. I know who my daddy is. And he's got my back and I have him. He's always with me. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. So no matter what it looks like, no matter what's going on around me, I know I have him. My treasure is him. I seek after him. The material stuff, that's fine. That's dandy. But that's that's minuscule to what I'm really going after. Right? Really, in all honesty, when you think about it, the 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 the, the material things is really birthed out of the relationship you have with him. You know, sometimes we get so caught off of cars, and sometimes we get so caught off of, of houses, but we what we fail to understand is all of those things are birthed from the inside out. See, when you see the car happen, you see the promotion happening, you see the, the houses that pop up, the new houses, and these, these new things pop up, what, what a lot of them, the average natural person, even people in the church, what they see is, oh, the Lord is blessing them. What I see is something is going on in you. You're, you're starting to abide in some things. Something spiritually is growing in you. And the spirit world is, is the parent world. Come on now. Everything has to be formed and birthed from the spirit world. So things start growing in you. Things start changing in you. And, then, and it has to it burst in you. And then it has to show itself. It has to manifest. So the, so the growth that's happening in you by way of his word, by way of the Holy Ghost, starts to birth and, and, and grow in you. And then it manifests itself in a new car, <laughs> in a new house. And it's the strength in you. So the real change is always in you. But the change that's happening to you has to show itself. It has to manifest itself. So it manifests itself in promotion. It manifests itself in new car, in new house. Uh, you, you follow coming from a financial breakthrough. All of those things manifest themselves because of the growth that's happening in you. So the real growth is always in you. So when I see houses, when I see cars and stuff like that popping up, the first thing I say is that, you know, we thank God for those things. But what really catches my attention is you are letting his word work in you. You are treasuring his word. And because you're treasuring his word, you've allowed it to get into you. You've allowed it to grow into your garden. You've also applied it in some places in your life. And because you've done that, now a harvest comes and it manifests itself physically. The spirit world is always the parent world. That's why you can't never go wrong sowing to the spirit. That's why he said, look, sow to the spirit. Sow. Sow to the spirit. You can't, you will always get a harvest. But it's not even about a harvest. You're sowing to the spirit because you're really going after him. Because what? He is the treasure. He's who I'm going after. And if anything else is birthed behind that, it's because I'm going after him. I thank God for him. But that's not that's not my goal. He's my goal. Y'all see how this works? But listen, that's just a good verse to just check. This when I read that the other last week, I said, you know, that's a good one. Let's just go over and say, hey, where is my treasure? And if my treasure is in the wrong place, this is a good place just to make the adjustment. Let his word come in as a lamp. Light up your, oh, hold on. I may have been focusing more over there. Let me get my focus back on the Father. Let me get my focus back on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I can get so I can get my, my, my priorities straight. All right? So let's just make sure that our treasure is in him and with him. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We want to make sure our heart is with him as we're dealing and moving back and forth. But that's Luke 12 and 34. All right, real quick. Let's go to John 17 and 3. I've quoted this scripture quite a bit. Amen. But I feel like we should just come on and just take a look at it. You know, some scriptures I quote so much, you know, I just feel like we should just go ahead and read over it. And just come, and, come on and take a look at it. Watch this. In John 17, chapter 3. John 17, chapter 3. I mean, John 17, verse 3. I'm sorry. John chapter 17, verse 3. Now watch what this says. It says, and this life, this is life eternal. You know, we was, we was, we was taught and raised and brought up, and even myself, I always thought eternal life is, you know, when you get over. You know, when you cross over with, you'll be with the Father, you know, to, to live, to live as Christ, but to die is the gain. And when you die, you, you gain, you get eternal life. There's no more pain. There's no more crime. There's no more sorrow. 
You know, there's all the unspeakable joy, all joy. You know all things. No, all the, all of those things what I just said are very true. But I never really understood that what real eternal life was. So let's look what the word of God has to say. Let's see what the Father says about eternal life. Verse, verse three. Watch what it says. And this is like eternal our eternal life. What is it? That they, that they might know thee. Watch this. The only true God. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now watch this. Hold on. <clears throat> so what the Father is saying by way of Jesus Christ, he's saying eternal life is this. This is life eternal. This is eternal life that you get that you will know me. Watch this. Not only know me, but know that I'm the only true God. Now I like the way he says that because he does not denounce or denote the fact that there are other gods. Hallelujah. And don't we know that? There are other gods out there. There are other voices out there. He said, but out of all the voices, out of all the other gods, he said, I'm the only true one. Everybody else has a voice. Everybody else tries to get a position. He said, but I'm the only true one. Watch this. And Jesus Christ, or Jesus the anointed, whom thou hast sent, or whom I sent. He said, you need to get to know us. So eternal life starts here. <laughs> Look, now in this time, hallelujah. He said, you're going to get a hundredfold back. He said, you're going to get a hundredfold now in this time. Come on now. Now watch this. Eternal life starts here now in this time. Getting to know him starts here. Getting to know the father, to understand the father, to, to get established and understanding what he did by way of Jesus Christ. All of those is, is now. It starts now. Eternal life is now. It's present. Hallelujah. Now faith is. Eternal life is before you right now. Now is the opportunity to take the time out to get to know the Father yourself. Now is the opportunity to take the time out to get to know Jesus for yourself, for yourself. Not through mama and them, not through grandma and them, not through your pastor. Hallelujah. You get that you got an opportunity. What the, what the Father has done by way of Jesus Christ is that he set up a, a, an avenue, a, a access for you to walk in and get to know him yourself individually one-on-one -on -one. man but then the way that he deals with um each 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 person is individually is it's it's so different everybody's different because everybody has different personalities everybody has different uh, uh experiences everybody has different things they've gone through in life you have some things that you experience in your life that i've never experienced just like i've had some things in my life that i've experienced that you probably haven't come through so he deals with us according to what we've gone through, our personality. But look, he's given us the opportunity for every believer, every believer. Notice I'm saying that. It's, it's through those that believe. For every believer, watch this, to know him. What do I do? How, how do I get to know him? All right, Pastor, you're saying I got to, how do I get to know him? Your knowing him is in your private time. You're home alone. You got that quiet space. Your quiet time might be going back and forth to work. You commute back and forth to work. You got 20 minutes. You go cut that cut that music off and just talk to your father. He's sitting right there in the passenger seat. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Don't be shocked when you hear something back. Don't be shocked when he talk back to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You take the time out and get to know him. How else do I get to know him? You get to know him according to his word. You get his word in you. And you let his word, you meditate on his word, you ponder on his word. Those are those are things you, you take to get to know him. As you allow his word to get in, as you get closer to him, then you apply his word to your life and you watch how his word works. His word works in every situation. All you got to do is just throw the seed. The seed is always going to work. Are you, are you with me on this? So knowing him starts here in this earth. And we all can know him. Every last one of us. Can nobody stop you from knowing him? Nobody. You're the only one can stop you from knowing. Him. And how the deep you want to go is up, is, is up to you. You can go as deep as you want. <laughs> Some go ankle deep. Come on now. Y'all remember the vision back in Ezekiel? He said, look, I went out into the, I was ankle deep. And he said, I came back out. He said, I went in and I was, that was knee deep. He said, I came back out. He said, the next time I went in, I was, I was to my waist. Hallelujah. Come on now. So he said, I came back out. He said, but I went back before. He said, I, I, I couldn't crawl. I, he said, I had to swim. Oh, that's deep right there. When you got to swim, that's deep. So look, some of us make the decision to go ankle deep. Some of us go to the knees. Huh. Some of us get to the waist. 
Hallelujah. But some of us is swimming. Some of us have made a decision to go swimming. So, so how deep do you want to go? It's up to you. And you can't let, nobody can't stop you from going. You're the only one who can make the decision how far you go. Amen. But I implore you, I beseech you, my sisters and brothers in the Lord, to get on out there on the deep end. You know how some folks say, I don't like the deep end of the pool. You know how some, when you had some the pools, they had the deep end a little 10 feet. You have some folks that never go to the deep end. Now, if they go, they holding on to the wall. They never take the time out to learn how to get out there in the deep end and the maneuver, right? But then you got some folks, as soon as they get to the pool, they're they jumping off the diving board. They're jumping in the deep end, right? And he's saying, look, how, how, come on out here and get to know me. Come on, come on out here and get to know me. I've made a way now by way of my son, Jesus Christ. Come on out here and get to know me. So this is a good one. Uh, this is this was an eye-opener for me. I still meditate on this one uh, to this day. Knowing him. Look at this. One more time before we move on. This is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God. He's the only one. And Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Amen. That's John 17 and 3. Knowing him, knowing him. All right. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians, Colossians, Colossians 3 and 15. Amen. I had a mix up last week. Amen. We're going to make up for it right now. Colossians 3 and 15. I think I read Colossians 3 and 5, uh, which is a good verse. We could, we could, any verse I pick is a good one. Amen. But, um, I think I was supposed to do 15, so I said, you know what, we'll just we'll make up for it right now. So Colossians 3, verse 15. Now look what it says. Look what it says. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Okay. Let's look at this. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. <clears throat> John 14 says, look, he said, this peace, he said, I, I'm going to leave you a peace, but the peace that I leave you is my peace, not the peace that the world has. He said, I'm going to leave you my peace. So the Father is saying, look, that peace that I've left by way of Jesus Christ, he said, let it rule in your hearts. Don't let anything steal your peace. Don't let anything take away your peace. Don't let situations, don't let people, watch this, don't let persecution move or just uh, alter your peace. You always stay centered in the peace of God. He's saying, look, let it rule. Look what's supposed to rule in your heart. And we're not talking about that muscle in your chest. We're talking about the real you, the spirit man of you. He's saying, let my peace rule there. Look, and you can have such a peace. You can uh, see the peace of God. This is the peace of God. It, 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 it keeps you so, so, so solid and sober. All hell can be going on around you. And you're not moved. Why? Because you have a peace. Stuff is falling apart around you. Uh, family members are getting sick. Uh, a situation is happening on your job. You, you got car issues. You, your little one is going through. You, 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 your money then got messed up. You know, you just got all kind of stuff going on around you. But you so the, 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 this peace has got you. It's buckled. You buckled in. You're unmovable. Why? Because you are allowing the peace of God. To rule in your hearts. What, what's another? What's what's one? What's one way we can talk about the peace? His word. You're allowing his word to rule in your heart, and even though things are going on already, even though there are things going on around you, you're not moved. You're still sober. You're still together. You still can smile. You still got a joy. You still got a peace. Ah, oh, look at this. Watch this. To the which also you were called. Now look, he said you were called to do this. You don't know what I've been going through, Pastor. And you just don't understand what they said to me. And you just don't get how they did me and how they treated me. They didn't have to do that like that. They just went above and beyond. Don't that sound like Satan? Satan, that sound like Satan right there. That sounds like something he would do. Because Satan is always going above and beyond. He's always going over. He oversteps his boundaries. He goes too far. He don't know how. He don't, he don't know anymore. He don't know any better. That's all he does. He, he's so blinded by fear and hate. He don't he don't know any better. That's all he knows how to do. Steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's all I know how to do is steal. That's all he knows how to do. Right? So even with all of those things, he's saying, look, let the peace, of, let my word, let my peace rule in your heart. 
Watch this. To which you are called. You are called to allow peace to reign in your life. You are called to allow peace to reign in your household. You are called to allow peace to reign in you. That's one of your callings. Watch this. And be thankful. How can you be thankful when all hell is going on around you? How can you be thankful when you got this situation going on? And the situation with your kids and your money is acting funny. And they own your job uh, acting the fool. And then your spouse is just flipping out all of a sudden. And then your family member got situations going on. How can you be thankful? <laughs> he said, and be thankful. He said, he didn't say look at your situations. He didn't say look at your problems. He said, be thankful. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what it looks like, no matter how they're acting, he said, you stay in a place of thanks. You allow peace to rule and you stay in a place of thanks. And I've called you to it. I've called you to be thankful. How can you be thankful when all of that's going on? Because you know that it is already done. My father has already made a way. He's already overcome every issue. The scripture says in 1 John and 5 that he's overcome the world. He's already overcome. So that means if he's already overcome it, that means every situation that I'm faced with, he has given me the ability to approach it as an overcomer. If I understand that and I'm persuaded on that, how can I not be thankful in every situation when I really believe that? Oh, come on, saints. When you really believe that you are overcomer, how, how can you not be thankful? I don't care what you face with. Death, a loss of a job, a, a bankruptcy, but no matter what comes and tries to come your way, you will be thankful. Why? Because it's already done. He's faithful. And no matter what it looks like, he's a good God. He's a good father. And no matter what I'm faced with, no matter what happens, I will always lift him up on high. I will always magnify him. I will always give him the glory because he's been too good to me. He has been amazing. He has turned situations around that I know no man could have done. It was him and him alone. When I had no one to lean on, it was him and him alone that stood by my side, that turned that situation around for me. And when I understand that and I keep those things at the forefront of my mind, how in the world can I not stay thankful? Come on now, saints. I will stay thankful. I will allow peace to reign in me because he's done too much for me. He's done it all for me. And continues to do some things. And going and going to continue to do more. <laughs> Hallelujah. As I keep walking with him. As I keep going after him. There are other things that are going to birth. There are other things that are going to manifest themselves in my life. And I'm going to be just as thankful for them now. Matter of fact. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank him now for every future blessing I'm going to walk into. See, that's it. See, you read something like that. You can just say, you know what, Lord? Are you so awesome? I thank you now for, for every future blessing I'm going to walk into. I thank you right now for everything that's going to break that I haven't seen yet. I thank you now for the break. I thank you now for the turnaround. I thank you now. You see that? For the deliverance. I thank you now for it. You hadn't even walked into it yet. It hadn't even presented itself. And you already thankful for stuff that ain't even came yet. That's how you're supposed to be. So when the situation comes, instead of you being, oh, what did happen? Where did this come from? Why they did that? No, you can say, you know what, Lord? I thank you. I thank you. We coming through this. Hallelujah. Because you understand and you've been you've been sucking with him. You've been eternal life. You've been getting to know him, the true and only God. And when situations arrive, because you've been with him, you've been communing with him. You know him. Oh, you will be thankful. Hallelujah. Peace will reign. Hallelujah. Look this thing. Look at this. It's what you're called to do. What's my calling? If you're called to allow peace to reign in your heart. You're, you're called to be thankful. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that's a good one to read. That's Colossians 3 and 15. All right. Uh, let's got a couple of more and then we'll be done. Let's go to Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. And chapter one. First Timothy one. All right. 
Okay, we're going to do 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to do verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now watch this. Watch how it reads. It says, now the end of the commandment is charity. Out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a faith unhinged. All right? Well, let's, let's, let's look at this one. He said, now the end of the commandment. Okay, what are you talking about? <laughs> the end of the commandment. What were the commandments? Well, they were the, the, the commandments. Now, it wasn't just the Ten Commandments. We understand that. We understand that there were, I want to say there were about 633 laws that they had to abide by. And the scripture says that they were guilty of any of those. They were they, Any one of those, they were guilty of the whole thing. All right? So he's saying, look, the end of the ordinance, the end of the laws, the end of the you do's, look what he said, is Love now. <laughs> he said, he said, all of those now have been have been have been have been ended now because of love. Now all he has commanded us to do is to love. To love. To love. He said, look, love me with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But we gotta remember that's what Jesus Christ was up. Notice he said, love, you love me, you love me. Remember, that's law, that's law, right? Now that Jesus has died, rose, now he's taking the place. So now what he says now, okay, now you have to receive the love from me. Now watch this, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Now you have to receive it. You receive that love now. Come on now, how do you receive it? By believing it. You believe, you receive, then you can have it. So once you receive that love, Get established in that love. Then you can love yourself. Love your neighbors as yourself. But if you have not never taken the time to receive the love of God now because of what Jesus Christ has done through his death and burial and resurrection, then you're not going to ever be able to deal with people. Right? Come on. You're not going to ever be able to live selflessly. You're going to be you're going to be in Christ selfish. And how many selfish Christians have we come across in our day and in our time? You got a lot of selfish Christians, but love the Lord. But just as selfish, just about themselves, but love the Lord. And that just goes to show they don't understand something. Doesn't mean that they don't they don't truly love the Lord. Doesn't mean they're not going after the things of the Lord. They just have not allowed themselves to die someplace. So now look at this. He said, Look, now the end of the commandment is love out of a pure, a pure heart. What's that mean? A sincere heart. To somebody who's really going after it. You can, you can tell when somebody's really going after some things. You can hear it in their voice. You can hear it in their conversation when they're really going after it. They, they, they've seen some things. They've tasted and seen how good he is, and they're really going after it. They're going after What are they going after him? Going after love. Watch this. With a pure heart and a good conscience. Not only are they going after it with a sincerity, but they also understand that he's cleaned them up, and it's not on their works anymore. It's not, a, it's not, it's not me having to work anymore. See, as long as I keep, if, it, if I keep you having to do it, that you know, you do you know how what, what that does to a person mentally? Because now it's you it, it puts the responsibility on you, it puts the pressure on you to do it. So now you you have the pressure to be holy, you have the pressure to be sanctified. You put all that pressure on you to do all the things that Jesus Christ has already done for you, right? So then what I'm supposed to do is to get you to believe in what Jesus Christ has done, and then you live from that place. You 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 live from the place of what you believe. If, if you're not believing in him and what he's done and what he did crosses the board, then you'll find yourself in him trying to work and then things aren't coming together. Things aren't manifesting. Why? Because you're in him working when you're supposed to be resting in the finished works that he's already made available to you. Right? So it says, look, the end of working and all of that is love out of a pure heart, good conscience, understanding what he has done. Watch this. And a faith Unfeigned are sincere faith. A faith that is sincere. A faith understanding what he did. What is your what is the main thing you should have for faith? Because you, you you know what you, you think about it. What is faith? What, what is faith? Now we can give you the biblical uh definition. Now faith is the uh the substance of things hoped for, the things are uh, the evidence of things not seen. That's the, the biblical well, what is what is true faith? What what, what is faith? Faith, I believe, this is just me now. I believe faith is just having the pers uh, 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 perspective, having the right insight. 
an understanding that it has done, understanding that he has he has sent his son, he loves me, and I get established and I rest my my faith in that in that alone. Now, through that and understanding that he loves me, I because I understand that he loves me, that's gonna open up the door and that's gonna have me to come in to want to suck with him more, to want to get to know him more and get to know him in the right light. I'm not coming to him for a blessing. Because we brought some, we, we've told some people how to come on in because he'll bless you. And those that is true. He will bless you. He he will prosper you. He will do all of those things. But it, that's, that's not why you're coming in. <laughs> you know, you don't come in for the, you come in to get to know him. You come in to be changed. You come in so he can he can clean you up and he can change you. And it's it's his job that he's going to do the change. It's not my job to change you. It's my job to point you to him. And then he's going to do the change. And if he, if you, if he, if you don't change after you've been walking with him for a while, it's a choice. You choose not to change, right? But he is going to come and address some things. He is going to come. Look, we just read it at the very beginning. It says, "What well, your word is a lie to my people." He's going to bring and expose things in you, and it's up to you to see them and not be in denial and say, "You know what? I'll change." So my faith is 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 sincere in the fact that he loves me. And I and I get established in that, and that's going to open up the door for so much more. And it's gonna it's gonna keep my faith uh, more simple too. The simplicity of my faith now is in that in that alone. And now I don't have my faith in all these other different departments like I used to have back in the day. See, back in the day, I used to have my faith all over here for the job. I had my faith over here for my wife. I had my faith for the kids. I had my faith for my finances. I had my faith all over the place. But now I got my faith. And the simplicity of what faith is, is that what? He loves me. Hey, look, you can't touch that. And now, because he loves me, that covers the job. Because he loves me, that covers the wife. Because he loves me, that covers the kids. Because he loves me, that covers my finances. Because he loves me, that covers any doors I need to open. Because he loves me, that covers anything I need to have changed. Any turnaround, anything that needs to be delivered. Because he loves me. That, that, that manifests his healing in my body because he loves me. I understand my righteousness because he loves me. I have grace reigning and ruling in my life because he loves me. Y'all see how this works? Now watch this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because he loves me and I understand that I get rooted in that. Now watch this now. Now I can't do nothing else but stay thankful. But because he loves me has already been manifested by way of his son. So now all I can do is stay thankful. Remember he just said that? He said, he said, look, let the peace of God rule in your life from which you were called. And he said, look, and be thankful. Be thankful when you understand some things. Be thankful. Why? Because he loves me. Watch this now. He says, now the end of working is the law, is love, is charity. Out of a pure heart, I'm truly going after him. And I'm not going after him for stuff. I'm going after him for him. And good conscience. My conscience has been cleared. My conscience has been, is pure. My conscience has been been cleaned out by way of the blood. He's cleaned me from all unrighteousness. He's cleaned me for all sins. He went in and offered offered for sins once, and then he sat down. He has perfected me. He has sanctified me. Come on, saints. That ain't, all that what I'm saying is scripture. That ain't me just coming up with all that's word. That's in his word. When you understand that, you get established in that yourself. Come on, saints. You, how can you? Where's that shipwrecking when everything everything I have is dependent upon him? It's him that I'm leaning on. It's him that I'm going after. It's not my spouse. It's not my, you, you follow, come on, it, it, it's him. Watch this. So I have a good conscience. My conscience is clear. I'm not, I'm not right here thinking about sin. I'm not right here being dominated about getting it right. I don't wake up every morning saying, I'm going to do the right thing. Lord, help me to keep straight. Help me to stay on the narrow, the narrow path. No, I wake up righteous. I wake up loved. I, I wake up pure. I wake up holy every morning. Why? Because the sun has paid for that for me. Watch this. In a faith, un, a sincere, a sincerity in the fact that he what? He loves me. I'm sincere in that, that he loves me. And nobody can touch that. And guess what, saints? Just, just like for you, nobody, don't, nobody can touch. I don't care who. Nobody can't touch the fact that he loves me. Nobody can touch the fact that I know him. Even if you don't think I know him. <laughs> How y'all stop, stop? Let me tell you something. Time always tells. Time will tell. Time will tell who knows him and who doesn't. Time will tell who understands his love for them and who doesn't. Time always will tell. 
So just let time keep rolling. See how things unfold. But nobody can touch the fact that I know him. Nobody can touch the fact that he loves me. And, he, and that could be the case for every believer across the board. Amen? Amen. So that's that's First Timothy 1 and 5. The commandment ends in love, pure heart, good conscience, and a faith unfinned or a sincere faith. Amen. All right, last place, and then we're going to be done for the night. Let's go to Revelation 12 and 11. Last place, and we're done for the night, 12 and 11. Let's see what this one is talking about. Oh, yes, this is a good one. All right, it's a good one to end on. All right, Revelation chapter 12. Verse 11, watch this. Watch this now. Watch this now. This is a good one. And they, talking about the saints, they're talking about us, the believers. Watch this. A lot of times you hear this verse quoted, but they always leave off the end of this verse. I don't know why, because you can't even get the first two without doing the end. Oh, God. Watch this. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood. And by the word of their testimony, spirit of prophecy, what he has done. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch this. And, and they love not their lives until the death. Uh-oh. Hold on. See, the other two are left powerless if you don't do the third one. The other two are predicated off of you not loving your own life. Because let me tell you something. You can have, you can talk about the blood and, and you can have a testimony of what God has done for you. And if you're selfish, none of them will have any power. Selfishness will cut all that off. Because you have to be selfless in this walk. So if if you don't, you have to understand that you cannot love not their lives until death. It, it, you, you, you don't, you don't, it's not about you. You deny, you die to. Isn't it interesting that he said, if you're going to follow me, the very first thing that he said. That he, that he said, he said, look, if you're going to follow me, he didn't say, you know, you got to go and make a confession. You got to go, you know, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you'll be saved. That, that is not what he said. He didn't say, you know what, you got to get your stuff under the blood because you don't get it under the blood. It's going to be, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna shipwreck it. That's not what he said. He told them, he said, look, if y'all going to follow me, the very first, the first thing you're going to have to do is deny yourself. What? What do you mean deny? What do you mean die to yourself? You're going to have to, to die to yourself. Die to how you feel about it. Die to how you see it. Oh, God. We, we, we still have not understood this. Die to how you feel about it. Hallelujah. Haven't we seen that here recently? A lot of feelings and how they feel about it. And he said, look, y'all following me? Y'all supposed to die to that. Now, look, I, we're not, we don't say that to justify what's going on. But we ought to be following him. Hallelujah. Regardless of what's going on, we're following him. It's about him. Our life lived is to be, the legacy we're living, leaving is to be going after Jesus. We're, we're seeking after him and how he responds, how he deals how he moves. And he said, look, if you're going to be coming, if you're going to follow me, you need to deny yourself. So he said, look, they overcame with the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. The word of the testimony. And, and you'll, you'll see it all the time. They'll quote it, oh, the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. And they, uh, they don't never add the and. We got to put the and on there because the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony is predicated off you not loving your life unto death. It's predicated on you not being selfish in this thing. You have to be selfless. Because if you are selfish, I'll say it again. If you are selfish, the blood of the lamb and your word is null and void. <laughs> because you're selfish. It's about you. You got hidden motives, agendas. Anybody that's selfish, ultimately it's going to be about them. The way they move, the way they deal. You can even preach just because you're preaching. You're preaching from a selfish place. Ultimately, you gotta, you, you're going to have you're going to have hidden agendas, hidden motives behind your, your preacher. And your preacher might be good. <laughs> but just as selfish, it's about them. Come on, saints. Look what he's saying. You, you, you have to get that last piece. And they love 
not their lives unto them. You cannot love your life. He said, unless a seed fall to the ground and die, it will not produce fruit. He said, if you fall to the seed and you won't die, you won't produce nothing. He said, but unless it die, he said, it will, it will produce an abundance amount. But it must die. You have to die to yourself. Die to how you feel about it. Die to how you see it. Die to your own responses. Come on. You got to deny all of those things and bring under, subject that flesh. Bind them. And let your spirit man rule. Let your spirit man respond through this vessel. And when I do that, Watch this. The blood that always works. My testimony will have power behind it. Why? Because so it's not about me. What are you dying to? Dying to you. Come on, let me tell you something. You die to you. That that eradicates fear. <laughs> the more you dead, the less fear operates in your life. If you got a lot of fear operating in your life, that means you still alive and well. But the more you die, the more fear. Moves out. And when you die to yourself and become selfless, that kicks out fear. No more fear because it ain't even about you. And even if you lose your life in it, it, it is what it is. We call you in there, you go, and they talking about we going you come over here, we're gonna take your life. Well, I got to see if you can do that. I gotta see if you can take my life. Because if he didn't call me over here, if he didn't send me over here, <laughs> you don't know who it is. Come on, saints. Y'all, we gotta get a we gotta get bold with this stuff. We gotta understand who's with us. We 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 everybody else is hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody else is bold with this stuff, aren't they? Aren't they? You got the you you, you got the uh, uh the LGBT, the I'm sorry, the, the alphabet, you know, they they got their stuff, they bold, they bold with it, they got the parade, they bold with it. Come on, you 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 got all these other groups in the and, 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 and women rights and everybody, everybody's bold with it. You, you got the, the, the politicians, they bold with this stuff. And then we get right here, we get talking about Jesus, and then we ain't, we, yeah, we love him. Come on, saints. He, he's good. But we got to get to a place where we get just as bold. He is Lord. He is King. He is my life. Therefore, I have no more rights. I have no more my way. I have been bought with a price. I do not belong to myself. I belong to him. The blood has been shed for me. I belong to him. I'm not my own anymore. You see how this works? Come on, saints. Overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of the testimony, and love not their lives unto death. We got to get that last part. It's very key. It's very important in this walk with Christ. Not loving your own life. Die. To yourself in Jesus' name, amen. And the Holy Ghost will teach you this. Come on, he, he's not telling you to do this apart from the Holy Ghost. Anything that I ever, anything I ever mention, I say you got to do it, it's, it's in line with the Holy Ghost. So if you say you got to deny yourself, you're not denying yourself by your own power in your own power, you deny yourself with the help of the Holy Ghost. You love lock your own life unto death with the help of the Holy Ghost. Everything that I'm talking about is with the help of the Holy Ghost, amen. All right, so. This is a good one to, to remember as you understand this and you die even the more, you'll overcome everything with the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. But it all is predicated off you not loving your own life. All right. So that's um Revelation 12 and 11. Um, that's our scriptures for the night. I thank God for all of those who come in to um, hear, um, allow his word to go into your heart. Amen. Go back over the scriptures. Read them again for yourself. Meditate on them yourself. And let God let God speak to you. Let him let him let him show you some things. Amen. He's he's always wanting to reveal. He loves giving revelation. He loves breaking new understanding. I mean, he loves it. He delights in it. It pleases him for you to understand him more. Amen. So um, let let's do that by way of his word. All right. Uh, so let's pray real quick, and then I'm gonna let you get out of here, Father. I thank you. I honor you. I bless you. I magnify you for your word. I thank you for your growth. I thank you for maturing us. I thank you for helping us to see more clear, understand even more the clear. I thank you for your word coming in and being a, a light upon my path and light upon my feet. Father, I thank you for your word coming in 
and establishing us and anchoring us in who you are and, and who we are in you. Father, I just ask you to continue to manifest yourself even the greater to all of those that are under my voice, to all of those that are seeking after you. We just thank you and honor you for your love. And we just bless you above every situation and above every issue now in Jesus' name. And we're going to continue to just boast on you and who you are. And we thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. The saints, let me tell you something. Let's boast on him. Let's boast on him. You might be going through a tight situation right now. But right in the middle of your tight situation, you give God some thanks. Give God some glory. Boast on him. Don't be talking about the devil fighting. Don't be talking about the devil is, 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 is dealing. No, boast on who your father is. Boast on what your God is doing. Come on, what your father is doing in Jesus' name. He's awesome. He's amazing. And he's working it out, even though I don't see it. Let me tell you something. The father's like a director. You don't never see the director, but we, we stay to get movies, aren't we? Aren't we stay to get movies? You don't never see the director, but the director get his credits. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. That's how the father operates in your situation and in your stuff. He's the director of your life. You don't see him, but he's calling the shots. Hallelujah. He's pulling the strings in the background. You better know he's directing your life. So, Father, we thank you for directing now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Y'all be blessed. I will see y'all on Sunday at 12 o'clock. Don't forget to register. For those who, are, who want to come in, uh, please do register. Register at saltandlight700 at gmail.com. Uh, register at uh, saltandlightcovenant.com, the website. Um, for those who want to come in, register. Please register no later, no later than Saturday at uh, 12 midnight. All right, so we can get some things, uh, really 12 noon, so we can get some things prepared. So no later than Saturday at 12 noon for those who want to come. Register, 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 please. Okay, all right. Until then, y'all be blessed. And uh, as we depart, what's his name? Jesus, what's his name? Jesus, what's his name? Jesus, until Sunday at 12 o'clock, y'all be blessed and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.